What's going on, everybody? So the video today has to do with the Song of Ice and Fire series, which the Game of Thrones TV show is based on. And the question here is, after the season finale uh, that was on last night, am I still excited for the book, The Winds of Winter, that's to come? Stick around to the end of the video to find out. Nah, get that BS clickbait out of here. The answer is yes. Now, a fair warning here, winter is coming. I mean, spoilers are coming, so if you haven't read the books or gotten far in the show uh, as far as the episode that premiered last night, you might want to turn back south. But for the rest of you, let's dig into this a little bit deeper. So I've read all of the books of the Song and Ice and Fire series, and I especially loved the first three. Everybody that I've talked to about it, I've really made a point to say that those first three books were one of the greatest runs of any series that I had read. I just thought that the character development was superb. I loved getting to the different points of view of everybody. I thought the world building was so expansive and well explained because there were all these houses, but you didn't feel that overwhelmed about it. And the plot moved with a fantastic pace. You know, you didn't feel like you were getting rushed into any situations and every climax that happened really felt like it was earned because of all of the events that had happened before it, all of the plotting, all of the politics. It just felt like those three books were really the pinnacle of the series. I got a little dragged down with the fourth book, A Feast for Crows, because I didn't expect the characters to be split in half, and all of the characters that I really wanted to read about after the first three were segmented to the fifth book, and of course there were compelling characters in the fourth one, but... There was just such a focus on Cersei Lannister. I think I looked up the percentages of the chapters, and she was a very, very large majority of the book. And she had this paranoia to her that got just exhausting to read. But it picked back up with the fifth book, and they weren't bad by any means. I still thought that they were great. It was just there were certain parts uh, of both of them that I felt like, you know, it could have been one book, and... It just felt like it was dragged on for that world building, and I thought that they, it had already been done pretty well before then, um, but it maybe got a little too far for books four and five. And then it left on multiple cliffhangers, and we were sitting there waiting for the next installment, and soon enough, the show passed the books, and a lot of those cliffhangers actually got answered by the show rather than the book, and so uh, it just kind of, for a lot of people ruined the excitement for the books for them in particular and so the question for a lot of people is why would I still be excited about the winds of winter which will be the sixth book in the series and to that I say as good as the show has been it hasn't been perfect and there are a lot of moments where I felt like the show has been really rushed which is kind of frustrating because I know HBO was planning on the series going for 10 seasons and the creators were saying that they didn't have enough material to work with and so they wanted to cut it down to eight. And not only that, the seventh and eighth seasons were shorter seasons, but then they just started rushing, and so that didn't really make any sense. Uh, and everything was too convenient because of that. They knew that they needed to reach this end game. And so when somebody's like, oh, I'm gonna travel across the world, they were there in minutes. They're traveling thousands of miles. How does that work? I know it's a fantasy, but it's something that I feel like should be taken into account, especially since the show and the books had prided themselves on these really extended periods of travel and development of these characters through their conversations as they were getting from point A to point B. And that's the thing. I like the trudge, and that's something that I think the books did a lot better than the show. The show wanted things to happen, so you had more of a spectacle on screen, but when you are reading the books, there are so many instances where characters are traveling for almost an entire book's length. And I know that uh, this particular grouping of characters got their own time on the screen, but I thought that in the book, uh, it was developed way better. It was with Jamie and Brienne. And I felt like there was a lot more character development with Jamie because you got to get into his head. And as they were traveling along, you really did start to have that change of heart for Jamie because until then he had been this infamous Kingslayer 
and you start to feel some sympathy for him. And I think that that plays out so much more with where he's at, uh, not only in the books, but in the show. After the season finale last night, uh, there's a big moment that he had with Cersei. And I don't think that that would have happened unless he would have had all of that development with Brienne. And I think that I got so much more out of the show because I had read that in the books. And another thing, I really like the book's ability to flesh out the houses. Again, because the show is rushing through so much, I don't think that the Martells really got their time to shine. They, of course, had some bigger roles to play with Oberyn, for instance, fighting the mountain. But uh, towards the end here, they've really just kind of been pushed to the side. And I liked getting to know more about their house in the books. And I just don't think that there was as much depth in the show. And also the Greyjoys. I know that there was a lot of development in the show as well with them to get to the point where they could push the story along. But you got to see so much more about the choosing of the leader of House Greyjoy in the books. And the thing is, is that never really uh, came to fruition in the books. There were still uh, other plot lines that needed to happen for all of that building of that world of the Iron Islands to make a difference in the story overall. And I think that that will be really exciting to read going forward because the Greyjoys do end up playing a big role and it's more exciting when you get to uh, find more motivations of characters and really uh, find more than just the heads of the houses to feel sympathetic with and the book should do that really well and at this point the show is almost an alternate timeline from the books there are characters that are still technically alive like lady stoneheart she came up at the end of the fifth book and then we never really had a chance to get any resolution with her character and she's nowhere to be found in the show and so i think that george R. R. martin probably had a bigger role for her to play but they just didn't have time in the show to develop that. And so there are also characters that have followed different arcs like Brienne, who was involved with Lady Stoneheart there at the end, uh, where she ended up doing something completely different, following a different path in the show uh, than she was at in the books. And so there are other possibilities. That means that the books can deviate from what's going on in the show. And so if you don't like it, there's probably going to be some better explanations as for why things are going on. And of course, the dialogue's different in the books. And honestly, the dialogue in the books are a lot better. I think that because the writing has gone past the original script for George R. R. Martin's books, uh, the writing has been lacking a little bit. And some of the characters who are more eloquent uh, in their previous entities earlier on in the show just have kind of lost that edge. They have uh, some of those moments peek through every once in a while, but I think that that quality definitely went down. And reading their stories in the books going forward, especially knowing what we all know now, it'll be exciting to hear them be those eloquent and well-spoken characters again uh, when they get to get to these really epic moments later on in the story for the book. And another big thing, I want Bran fleshed out. I just think that there's so much missed opportunity with his character. He becomes the three-eyed raven, and he becomes this all-knowing person. He can see into the past, potentially change the past, and just... He becomes a whole new character, and I think that they've barely touched on that in the show. He sits there and has these certain lines where he's just like, well, it doesn't bother him anymore. I can't see everything, but we're not getting into his thought process. And he had a whole season that he didn't even show up. And I want to dive into his head a bit more and see that transformation. It's kind of like with Dr. Manhattan in Watchmen, uh, which I have a review on that was a couple videos ago, when you can see time in that manner, all of these petty disagreements start to fall by the wayside. It just doesn't matter to you anymore. And that's the thing. There are so many petty disagreements in Game of Thrones. It would be nice to have a character that rises above all of that and becomes the true, all-powerful character that he's supposed to be. And branching off for that, I would like to just hear the inner thoughts of other characters as well. A lot of times, all we get is just a... I need more. I trust George R. R. Martin's vision for the story. Uh, he's done really well so far, despite my slight criticisms of books four and five. Like I said, I still thought that they were amazing, but it just 
couldn't reach the high that I thought the first three books reached. And if you haven't read them, at least try to start. I, I guarantee if you can get to book three, you will feel totally a part of this world and you'll feel that the journey is worth it for sure. Uh, and so I just want to see how he ends his own creation. And so that keeps me excited for the books. I don't know when they're coming out. It was supposed to be 2015, 2016, potentially at the end of this year, but there are estimates that it could be next year or beyond. Who freaking knows? But I trust his vision, and I'm still very excited to see where he takes his own characters and how he wraps up his own story. But let's be honest, it is pretty sick to see those dragons on the screen. How do you feel about the whole deal? Are you still excited for Winds of Winter? Are you going to pick it up when it comes out? Are you totally done now that the show has surpassed the books? I'm curious to hear how other fans feel about it, especially those of us that are on BookTube, because there are a lot of people that came in with the show, and there are probably a lot of people on BookTube that got in with the books first. And so I just want to know if that has affected you at all. I don't know uh, of many notable examples where any on-screen adaptations have overtaken the literature source material that it came from. Uh, and so I, I have no experience with it, but I am still excited and I just want to know what your thoughts are on it. Leave them in the comments below and bundle up. Winter is coming. See you on Friday for the next video of ShakeTube 2017.